rape shaming is making the victim of a rape feel ashamed or guilty of the violent crime that was inflicted on them. It's done in a variety of ways, from stigmatizing the victim of the crime to outright mocking the victim. A short while ago, Felita the Geek and her cyber boyfriend Radon, also known on YouTube as Atomic Number 86, rape shamed a friend of mine, Miss Pure Fiction. It was chronicled in Truth's Friction's video titled, Will You Tolerate This? That video was recently flagged down. One of Felita the Geek's contemporaries, Religion is Cancer, has decided to join her in these activities. This time, the target is Tamwas Girl, who never made this information public. And here's the video where Miss Pure Fiction addresses it. Three days ago, Belita the Geek posted this comment on the comment section of one of the first videos to be flagged down yesterday. This comment clearly states a threat that has been held over Eli Tamas Girl's heads since Felita the Geek began her campaign against us in late January. Don't let the inclusion of Smiling Skeptic's name fool you. That is a tactic she often uses to conceal her threat from outsiders. Before three days ago, this threat was much more subtle. Here it is clear and undeniable. On May 3rd, Smiling Skeptic made a video in which he disclosed that Tamwa's girl was the victim of a violent crime. Any survivor of a crime is automatically a witness. That alone makes their privacy crucial. A witness of any crime faces potential physical harm. If the private personal information of a witness of any crime is dropped on the Internet for all to see, it increases risks to the safety of that person. That alone is deplorable and damaging enough. However, there's more to this threat. Smiling Skeptic never mentioned the nature of the crime, nor did anyone else. This comment shows that Felita the Geek knew the nature of the crime. Religionist Cancer commented to me to imply that this threat was sarcasm when he saw a screenshot of it used in the video that I made two days ago. Perhaps everyone would believe that it was sarcasm if that private information had not come out in the comment section yesterday from none other than Marco himself. Tamwa's girl did not give that information to him. There are no Skype logs between them in which the nature of the crime against her is mentioned. They have never had a private voice conversation. The leader of the geek knew the nature of the crime. She threatened to out the information two days before it happened, as you see here. He not only throws this information out for public consumption, but he is mocking and shaming her. He didn't stop there. He continued. He was a mouthpiece to make good on Felita's threat. This is not the first time that she has used someone's personal information, particularly information concerning traumatic events in someone's life for the sake of winning a YouTube war. This is a pattern. Just earlier this year, a similar tactic was used against me, and I wasn't the first. This case is different. Tamar's girl did not discuss this event in her life. She was not ready to have this information known. She did not make that information publicly available. It was private and extremely personal information that she made the mistake of sharing with Felita. A lot of people have criticized me and my friends for continuing to speak against Felita. People have criticized the desire to keep evidence of her abuses publicly available. This is why. We were not the first people that she has threatened in this way. Almost everyone that she has done this to in the past was silenced and bullied into taking videos down. We want to make sure this doesn't happen again. We want to make sure that she doesn't have the chance to turn 
private information into a public spectacle again. Silence allows Felita to repeat her pattern with others. This is called rape shaming. It is unacceptable. Religion is cancer. You are vile. Felita the geek, you are worse because you've done this before. Links can be found below. Fear of this kind of treatment. Fear, embarrassment, shame, humiliation, and the fear of not being believed. This is the reason why many rape victims do not, will not, or cannot seek help. If victims of violent crime do not receive the proper medical treatment and care that they need, it can endanger their health, their welfare, and their lives. Rape shaming is particularly vicious because it forces the victim to relive the crime all over again. This is why people in the Alliance of Demons were quiet and not fighting back for so long. Keep in mind, this has been going on since the end of January. There is no justification for this. My friend who was just rape-shamed is no longer on YouTube. Felita chased her off months ago. Please visit the channel of my other friend, Miss Pure Fiction, who made the video, and show her your support. Please thank her for her courage in this. I honestly don't know why this is allowed to continue. I stand on the principle that rape-shaming is never, ever okay. Thank you for your support.